Okay, so what we're going to do now is make a belay for a, a multi-pitch climb. Now, a lot of people get hung up on multi-pitch climbing, but essentially, if you can make a belay on a single pitch climb, you should be able to do one on a multi-pitch climb. So what I'm going to do is try and get at least two wires in, one on the left and one on the right, so it comes down to a point that makes it a nice stable position. So this one I've actually put sideways. It's got good contact area. The narrowest point is much smaller than the widest point and I just need to seat it in now. And give it a little waggle and the wire's not moving. So that's, that's one of them. To start off with, what I'm gonna do is just clip that as a runner. And now I'm safe on this ledge because I've already got a runner in here and I'm going to get a, a wire in this crack. Again, put it in, it's got good contact area, seat it. So again, another screw gate carabiner. With both of these wires, I'm really happy that they're solid and they aren't going to come out. So I'm actually going to use these to make a belay. And there's certain things we need to worry about when we're making a belay. And I use the ideas principle. The I stands for they need to be independent. And what independent means that if, for instance, one of these was to fail and the rope came out of it, the other one shouldn't be shock loaded. The D is that the anchors are pointing in the right direction. So I've got a nice high anchor over here that will take a downward force, and this one will take a force in this direction towards me. The E is that when I finish the belay, these two ropes should be under equal tension. The A is that the angles are right. And what I'm looking for, like here, is a nice pointy angle. A pointy or acute angle is good. A 90 degree angle is okay. If I go to what we call an obtuse or over 90 degrees, because the force is approaching 100% to each anchor. As it is here, there's probably 70% of the load going to each anchor. And the final S of ideas is that they're solid. And I know these anchors are solid. What I'm gonna do is use a clove hitch. So what I've got is got one of these massive HMS carabiners. And the reason we want a big one is I want to get a couple of clove hitches on this carabiner. And what I'm going to do is clip it through the bottom of both rope loops. I'll start with the red rope. That's one clove hitch. And this is the other Clovich. Going to come over to this one, do this one up. And now have a nice, what I call, ideas belay. If I was to cut this rope here, this one is instantly under tension. And similarly, if I cut this one, this one is under tension. So both of these anchors are independent of one another. Again, we've got a nice direction and it's all about adjusting them so you're in the right place to belay and under the right tension. So now I have to worry about bringing up my second. So at this point now, I can shout down, safe! So I've just heard Steve shout off belay and that means now I can pull all these ropes in. And all I'm gonna do is pull them and make a neat pile just to the side of me. So Steve has just shouted up, that's me. So that's my cue to know that I've got to put them on belay now. So what we're going to try and do is get our climber on belay as quickly as possible. Now, I've got my belay device. This is the locking off hand. It doesn't matter which way you're stood, your locking off hand is always the hand closest to the belay. 
when you're on a multi-pitch climb. So if I was stood this way around, it would be my left hand, but actually, because I'm stood with my right shoulder closest to the belay, it's my right hand. This way, I get a nice 180 degree angle when I go to lock off. So I've now got Steve on belay the right way, so I can shout down to him, on belay, Steve, climb when ready. And I take the rope in here by pushing down, lock off, hands back here. Take the rope in, lock off, hand swap behind the stitch plate. 